The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, arrested former Imo State Governor Rosha Sokorcha and allegedly have refused to question him 24 hours later. And former Governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi, has dumped the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and his presidential ambition. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have arrested Rochas Okoracha, former Imo State Governor. The senator representing Imo West had earlier declined to be taken away by operatives, insisting that he will not submit himself to the anti graft agency without a warrant. But security operatives uh, broke the entrance doors to get into the home of the former governor. In a statement, Wilson Uwujaren, EFCC spokesperson, said they had orders to bring the former governor to stand trial before a federal high court in Abuja. A cautious family has now accused the EFCC of failing to interrogate him 24 hours after his arrest. His daughter, Uloma Okorocha, also confirmed that her father's arrest and detention might be part of plots to stop him from participating in the APC presidential screening and primaries. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dele Farotimi. He's a political analyst. Thank you so much, Mr. Farotimi, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure. So, um, I mean, the whole world watched as um, what some people would term as, um, you know, a scene from Mission Impossible, um, you know, play out on our screens. We saw the live footage from uh, the sitting room of the a senator, and we also saw what was happening outside thanks to pressmen. Uh, I just want to get a feel of what you think actually transpired and why it had to take that turn as opposed to him being invited to the EFCC on a normal day. Well, um, I guess when you, when you move away from the theater and you look to the substance, you find very quickly that what you're just saying, Okorocha is not playing this, the game according to the script is being handed. It's a simple enough thing. Number one, the man is not just being arrested. He'd been arrested before. He'd been charged before a court. He was enjoying an administrative bail, according to the EFCC. His next court appearance would appear to be on the 30th of May. He had absconded, no, no, he had declined to appear before the court at his last sitting. I think that was in March. So ordinarily, if the FCC was interested in ensuring his appearance before the court, the administrative bail that he had enjoyed would be revoked. We don't know yet if that is what had been done, but it would appear to be the reasonable assumption to make. If the administrative bail has been revoked, the EFCC had not arrested him this time around in order to be interrogating him. They've moved beyond the point of interrogation. The man has been charged. He's been charged for, I think, um, money laundering to the tune of $2.9 or something along those lines. So if they are now arresting him in the manner that we all watched, which is not new, if the truth be told, you'll find dozens of videos online where the same EFCC had deployed similar tactics against people they've labeled Yahoo boys. They will go to hotels, bust into hotels, arrest everybody in the hotel, and then begin a process of screening to ensure who the Yahoo person is and who isn't. So if a Yahoo senator, sorry to say, because that's what it would appear to be now, is now being picked by the same agency, well, I will say to you that... Um, he probably just didn't hack the script the way he's been instructed. Because ordinarily, I really don't know what he has done that is different from what all of them has done. And this time around, picking him up at the time, in the circumstances, deploying so much force, it doesn't say a lot that is positive about the EFCC, but it also doesn't in any way accelerate Rochas himself. Because if the truth be told, 
The FCC made a case. He had a bail. He'd been flouting the terms. He's refused to appear in court. They are within their right to arrest him. It's the manner of the arrest that we might deprecate. Um, quoting the spokesman for the um, um, former governor and senator, um, he did say something about the fact that there was a high court order from um, Port Harcourt that had barred the EFCC from prosecuting this case. In, in fact, he was on another station showing or handing out, you know, a copy of that court judgment. In fact, he also um, uh, alleged that the EFCC had been slammed a 500 million naira fine that had not been paid and that um, EFCC had also not gone to court uh, to vacate that order. Uh, and so that the EFCC is also one way or the other, um, you know, in bridge of the court. There's nothing new there. In the first place, I've said this ad nauseum. Nigeria is not governed by laws. So when you have a situation where a senator, a former two-time governor, takes off to a court in Porter Court, he gets himself a court order in Porter Court, stopping the EFCC from doing what it is doing. EFCC also will tell you that under the administration of justice, uh, criminal justice laws, they are entitled to do their job without hindrance or by way of any court order. They would have multiple levels. At the end of the day, nothing will happen to Okorochas. It's all about the administration of impunity. Okorocha will play the script by the time he comes out of EFCC confinement. He'll probably withdraw his candidacy like a good boy. And he would, of course, like every other one, once he recant, we've heard it from Adam Oshio Mole. Join us and you are immune. He's one of the foundation members of APC. So how can anyone expect that anything will happen to him? All that you are saying is that in the moment, he is required to act in a manner that is inconsistent with his own choices. And when he finally understands that he has to play according to the script, they will pat him on the back. He will go back to the chambers of the Senate. That was the senator of the Federal Republic. Mm -hmm. They will go back to the Senate again and make laws for the lesser mortals. And the FCC will promptly go back to chasing the Yahoo boys and filtering people through their processes. But at the end of the day, this is not about the Nigerian people. It has nothing to do with an anti-corruption war. Nothing of the sort. So in Prince Silva, he sat in that federal cabinet. Mr. Fowler, to me, you're insinuating... He stands the report of everything the FCC is doing. Are so you... it's a waste of time. It's Are you... Just another circus of anti-corruption. I'm sorry, are you insinuating that this is politically motivated as opposed to of course the it fight is. against of corruption? Course I'm asking because there are people who are on the side of the EFCC um, saying that, look, he mismanaged funds when he was governor. Uh, he's not of necessarily been is. able... So, so why would this be politically motivated? I mean, like you have also said, he's a member of the All Progressive Congress. If he were to be a sacred cow, would he be dragged as he was dragged to the glare of the whole public? Look, you, let me repeat what I said to you earlier. Nigeria is not interested in fighting corruption. If we were interested in fighting corruption, certain key members of the Buhari administration or regime would not be sat in that place. They were already hung, they had on their neck, they had corruption charges hanging around their necks before they became part and parcel of that cabinet. Okorocha is in very good company. He's not different from any one of the remaining lords, whether they be in the Senate or they be in the federal cabinet. So it's not as if there is anything extra. In fact, there is one that was convicted that is enjoying some sort of uh, reprieve, that is sat as the chief whip of the Senate. So let's get something clear, that Okorocha's stone is nothing new. That actually gives him the bona fide to be a member of the Nigerian ruining class. There is nothing new there. I'm not condoning it, but I'm pointing it out to you. So if they are chasing after Okorocha, you need to look beyond an anti-corruption fight because it's obviously not about anti-corruption. Okay. Corruption is not... Buhari is very comfortable with corruption. If you recall, just before the primary processes started, he even went as far as to instruct the EFCC not to get involved with the process. So you would understand that if they are now moving beyond that, it's not because Okorochas is corrupt. All of them are the same. 
So there must be a reason for going after Oporocha at this time. I'm not validating anything. I don't know, but nobody is going to convince me that this is about, it's also like somebody telling you that the allegations against the accountant general of the Federation is motivated by an anti-corruption But Of course it's not. They must have their own infighting that is going on. And they are going to be casualties in their game of thrones. But let nobody be fooled into thinking that there is an anti-corruption battle going on. Anything but, please, is an infight amongst them. They know why they're having their intra-class battles. But it will not result in anything that would affect the poor man on the street. It will not move the needle in, them, in any anti-corruption war because there is none. The problem of Nigeria is not corruption, it's impunity. And Okoro Charles knows that. He also knows that the levels of impunity will be shifted in his favor once the balance is restored in their coven. So we can discuss this and be having our episodic gyrations, talk about it, enjoy the talk, but it changes nothing. Rochas is merely paying for not doing what he's meant to do in the coven. When they are done punishing him within the coven, me and you will not be caught. You won't know anything about it. It will end there. Noise. End of story. After all the drama with Dino Melai, what happened to him? Nothing. Nothing. Fire Nothing. Name one that they have prosecuted in seven years. Nothing. Nothing will happen to him. We can enjoy talking about this in another year. I'm telling you straight up. Unless the system changes to hold it, even the people chasing roaches needs to be chased. So it is not a situation that should excite us as citizens, quote and unquote, because it really doesn't affect us. It's their own infighting. This is a yet another one of their wars. Do not die in their war. It's their war. It's not about us. I'm curious, um, when you say that, you know, there are reasons, and those reasons are personal to the people in your words, the Colvin. What, what sort of a threat would Okorocha be? I mean, in the scheme of things, let's look at it from the presidential ticket angle. I mean, in terms of weight and who, who would be able to appeal across the boards, does he even, you know, fall between the first five? I'm just curious. Uh, so much so that I'm, I'm trying to understand, you know, your narrative. If it were something I would buy into, what, how, yeah. how heavy... Uh, is an Okorocha in the scheme of things, if he be, if, if it be anything to go by what you're saying, that, you know, it's because he's not playing to the script, and I'm wondering, what script? Let me, let me explain something to you. I hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist, and I'm not one, but when something does not add up, when you reason normally, then you're forced to begin to look at those things that might not appear to be sane, because the situation is simply not sane. Now, you said of what significance really is Okorocha in the scheme of things. You say that because you assume that they are all playing for the presidency. Imo State is in a state of flux. There has been an ongoing battle between Okorocha and the, uh, the current governor of Imo State. They've had that ongoing battle for a while. You've had people kidnapped in churches. You now have a situation where the man is saying, look, for good or for bad, I have purchased a hundred million Naira ticket for the presidency. I want to be screened. And if you are arresting me at this time, I am not going to be able to attend the screening. Thus ensuring that I cannot even qualify to proceed further. Now, if a man has a court appearance for the 30th of the month, has been absconding consistently since he was first charged in January. Last appearance was in March. They say he'd been dodging and running away from being served. Question is this, this is not a civil trial. You don't run away from being served. You already charged the person to court. The important thing is to revoke the bail if he is not showing up. The timing of the arrest, the severity of the force deployed, that is, of course, not to discount the fact that the man also acted like a truant by not submitting himself once he saw them. He cannot talk about an arrest warrant at that point. So I'm not suggesting that 
Okoro Charles had been treated any different from any of the persons that the EFCC had deployed its forces against. But I am saying that considering the timing, considering also that this is an administration that has shown itself to be very, very comfortable with corruption, this man is not different from any one of the other members of the coven. There is nothing about it. He is not more corrupt than the other members of that coven. But in this case, he is trying to become the president in the coven. He, he, when I, let's, let this sink in for a second. I'm saying to you that a two-time governor of Imo State, a sitting senator of the Republic, was hauled out of his home like any common criminal or even a fellow citizen who has not done anything other than being suspected of having done something of sub nothing substantial had been established. He is treated like that. Now, is that the usual way they treat themselves? That kind of treatment is reserved for commoners like me and you. When you see that kind of treatment deployed, you now have to start asking yourself, what is different this time around? Roachers and other members of their coven are more comfortable and they will know exactly what they have bought from each other. But I'm simply saying, if corruption was the basis for, for the arrest of Roachers or Korocha, the Nigerian Senate should be emptied of senators. They shouldn't be able to have quorum in that place or in the federal cabinet for that matter. So I'm simply saying that look beyond the noise. Is the election season. The man was, <laughs> if it was about buying votes and the buy delegates, the man could jolly well have imagined as a presidential candidate if, if he had enough money to deploy. So, and that maybe they think the 2.9 billion has been kept to be deployed at the, at the election grant. For whatever reason, hmm. I think we should pay attention. Yes, he has a criminal charge in front of him, but could, this could have been managed differently. He Thanks. left it open to the suspicion that they are political on that one. What they have done in their coven is not my business. I don't know, okay. but that is the appearance that it has given. Okay, Let, let's talk about, because you've raised a lot of very interesting points. Um, I've listened to conversations about this on the radio. I've watched other people talk about it. It calls to question the um, seriousness about the war against corruption, whether it be now, whether it be before, even in the future. Again, what does this say about our crime-fighting institutions, especially the EFCC, the ICPC? Has, has, have they ever worked? Because it calls to question all of the people who have ever been taken in by the EFCC. And with the drama that we saw uh, a few days ago, it calls to question all of those things. And then, it's, this is a three-pronged question. What about the trust of the average Nigerian uh, in leadership in general, whether it be on the state at the state level or at the federal level, in fighting whatever it may be, whether it be corruption, and, of course, those who are looting from the nation's coffers? Well, let me, you've asked a lot of questions, so let's unpack them one by one. One, it would be delusional for anyone to suggest that there is, a, there is an anti-corruption war going on in Nigeria today or at any time in the last 20 years or thereabout. There hasn't been one. There has never been one. What you've seen have been episodic appearances of the, that carnival, that circles of anti-corruption that is designed to distract the people and to then give them the impression that something is being done Meanwhile, the real problem has never been corruption. The real problem has always been impunity. The refusal to ensure that there are due punishment for crime, not even arrest in most cases. So let's forget those lies and the charade. In seven years, who has been convicted aside from the poor Yahoo boy or the one who... He's always been the petty criminals, the FCC. In all fairness, let's be truthful to ourselves. That institution, there are good men and women there. They will do well if they are, if they were in a society that is allowed to function the way one should function. Most of them, I've had occasion to speak with a few. They have a lot of regrets about the way their works are usually scattered by their political overlord. 
But it does not change the fact that the body is redundant because the political will to allow it to do its job is simply not there. The Nigerian political class cannot afford to fight corruption because itself is rooted. You just need to look at the entirety of the current, the ongoing political, the political circles of uh, primaries and all of them. That's sufficient to let you know. Let's keep that to one side. You talk about the erosion of public trust. Nigerians have given up on this country. Let's be sincere with ourselves. We are all hoping that something will change, that something will happen to catalyze some change. But the truth of the matter is that no Nigerian that I know of is waiting to see something happen in the area of anti-corruption because we've all come to realize that there is no such thing. It's not going to happen. Those who should be doing it are the most corrupt, and they have no interest in doing anything about it. So the public trust in the capacity of the system for self-correction or for anything resembling, remotely resembling anti-corruption drives, the people don't expect it. We've all become completely cynical because we can see repeatedly our hopes have been dashed. Wari came on the wing of change. He was promising the biggest credential of General Buhari was anti-corruption and, and his capacity to fight insecurity. On both counts, negative, zero. So the capacity is gone. The people themselves have lost hope. So if you are still talking about public trust, forget about it, it's gone. We already know that we are being ruled by a coterie of thieves. Mm -hmm. We sometimes hope that maybe one will pity us and be a little nicer and less venal. But the reality is that nothing has changed. If anything, it's grown worse under the... In fact, the truth is it has grown worse under the APC. We've never seen corruption this brazen. Okay. Jonathan, I... sorry, please. One final point. Jonathan never appointed a person who had EFCC charges on his neck into his cabinet. And that was the person we all said was the most corrupt at that time. But today, how many ministers in that cabinet have the FCC charges on their necks? Or hard, I should say. But that's another story for another day. Um, like you mentioned earlier, and we're in the election season. With everybody's campaigning. People are putting out adverts and speaking, you know, nice, nicely and rolling out the best of vocabularies, asking for our votes once again. But all that you have said, if again, um, not to sound like I do not believe or I mean, or I'm skeptical, but there are people who also do believe that the EFCC is working, is trying its best. But if, if we are to go forward as a country, should this be a wake up call to us? And do you think that we've gotten to the point where we are certain, we are resolute that we will not vote in yet another person who we will be crying about in the next four years? Or um, I think the other way to ask I it wish. is I, I, the other way to ask it is when will be when will we be able to wake up to our responsibilities as, vo as voters and understand that we can't have it uh, business as usual? <laughs> Look, the Nigerian is a long way off from beginning the journey to rectitude. In the last, um, I believe, in the last couple of weeks. I have had several opportunities to be despondent about the chances of our country. And this is because an electoral cycle is upon us. Probably the most important election, if one will hold, in my lifetime. But the average Nigerian is so disconnected from the system that I am afraid that we might not be able to do the needful, but I will still hold on to some shred of optimism. Let's continue to watch what the process will throw off. Perhaps there might come a candidate who might come with a message of hope and a message of change. But the current set are just grave deep guys. I don't see anything to provoke hope currently, but you don't know what tomorrow might bring. And we live in hope. Perhaps somebody will come with a message, with a vision, that might galvanize the Nigerian people, but as of today, all I'm hearing are people preaching personal changes, none of which will save us.
what you are saying under Buari with the EFCC, with the Okorochas episode, pull it back a little and you remember that you saw something similar with Fayoshi crying over his neck, wearing the brace upside down. You saw it with Dino jumping out of moving bus. You saw it with Timpre. You saw it with Alamir. It's a long history. When we have a transformational leader who has vision behind which to unite the people, we might come out of this mess. But our chances are dwindling by the day because personnel changes won't save us. I mean, at times like this, people you know, make mention of the fact that we have an, a national orientation agency that's half past dead. Um, political parties are only canvassing for votes that will help them win the position. Um, maybe a few people like you who are interested in, you know, um, educating the average voter. I see that, you know, people like you are having those conversations, but at what capacity? Because again, one person can do just this much. Uh, do we need more of these conversations to be had, not just on the radio, not on TV, but where more and more people can be, you know, educated as to their rights, as to yes. how they can participate? Because we keep asking for strong institutions to be built, but where do we start the building process? So, no Voltron is going to save Nigeria. There is no vote from anywhere. There is no Superman. It's going to be the average Nigerian coming to the knowledge of the fact that he has no other country to call his home. He has to be the one to stand up and save himself. Looking to the political class is a waste of time. However, leadership is key in every situation. So yes, we will continue to agitate in our own little space and with as many platforms as are available to us to reach the people, to educate them. But that's the best we can do. We can only seek to educate, hoping that the people themselves will come to the knowledge of the fact that selling their conscience, selling their votes, detaching from the process, or finding alternative means of engagement with the system, which only exacerbates our situation, would not serve the purpose. We all need to find the engagement with the process. There are many beautiful young men and women walking all over the country. I know a few. They speak in the area of voters' education, mobilization of voters, citizens to go and register to vote. But how is INEC helping that process? Look to the ongoing primaries in the parties. You have seen, you have seen that even the political parties, they are clearly not designed as agents of change. They're just platforms for the capture of power. So a lot still needs to change. It might be that we are still with enough time to do something, or it might very well be that the change is already out of our own hands. Mm. But what is clear is that looking to individuals for anything beyond totem leadership and direction pointing is a waste of time. It has to be the people acting in concert before anything can change. Okay. You, individuals can only inspire by their own examples, but that's all they are, individuals. Okay. okay. The people themselves have to get to the point. You, you, it becomes quite frustrating when you seek to explain things. To uh, I think that we lost that connection. Mr. Faratimi, can you hear me? I think we lost that connection, but Daily Farah to me is a political analyst. Uh, I, I can hear you now. Yeah, we lost you briefly. Well, um, because time is not on our side, I want to say thank you very much for being part of the conversation. We'll only hope that things can get better. Thank you. All right, Daily Farah to me is a political analyst uh, and he has been talking to us. We'll take a break now. When we come back, we will be discussing the resignation of Pete Albee from the People's Democratic Party. Stay with us.